Gadgeteer here, and this is the Nomadic 1 liter Navigator Sling. I'm going to give a brief overview of its features, what it does well and what it does not so well, and then I'm going to give an overall score at the end of the video. Now, it's advertised as being made of a junior ballistic nylon. What junior means? I have no idea, but it feels pretty good. It feels pretty sturdy. Um, the front bit here is made of more of a rubbery material, uh, the part with this little logo embossed on it. I'm not quite sure what it is, but it's similar to some of their other products. As for the strap, it's actually made of a seatbelt material, so it's pretty hard to get any tougher than that. The buckle, it's a nice buckle. It, it works, works quite well. You've got your front pocket, a main middle compartment, and then a hidden expandable pocket on the back. There is a cord pass-through hole from the main compartment to the front one, but not one from the rear hidden compartment back into the center. It uses water-resistant lockable zippers. You can hear they make quite a bit of noise. And they are a little stiff, but that's just because of the waterproofing, or rather the water resistance. Now, I'll show you a little bit on how these lockable zippers work. They're actually also called tamper-proof, that's what they advertise them as. So basically, you take one of the zippers here, and hopefully you can see what I'm doing. You take one of the zippers and you pass it through the wire of the other zipper, and now it's just slightly harder to, uh to open the back. If you grab one of the zippers and pull it, it's going to bring the other one with it. And if you wanted to make this a little more secure, you could take a lock, like this, and you could just run it right through there, and now it's secure. Well, <laughs> okay, actually lock it, and now it's secure. Now we can open this. It's also got a little key leash here. Uh, that I have a little hair tie on right now. Key leash in the main compartment of the bag. It's just a snapping key leash. And last but not least, it has a hoop on one end that you can use to hang it up on something. I've been hanging on a hook with this, or you could attach a hero clip or some other carabiner to it. Now let's talk about what this bag does well. The highlight for me is definitely the expandability. So if we if we open up this rear compartment, you can see it is, uh, it's quite spacious. It expands from one, one liter up to three liters in size. And it's kind of got this, it's got this interesting thing going on where it has two zippers so that you can access it from either side. And it's an interesting decision to me. I'm not sure why they made two separate zippers rather than just having one double-ended zip, but it's got two sides, and it's got this interesting, like, elastic, somewhat elastic material. It's it's kind of a cool material, though I'm not sure how well it will hold up. If you don't want to use the expandability, you can actually just use this as a hidden pocket that you can put some somewhat larger things in, because I've got this... So it's got an interior zip here, and then an exterior zip. This is the expanding zipper, and then this is the inside zipper that it leads into. But yeah, there's that nice expandability. I would really, really love to see expandability on more slings. That was the main draw for this bag. It is awesome that it has it. But unfortunately, that's about where the good ends. So let's talk about what I think they did that isn't so great on this bag. So, first of all, this shell shape in the front. You can kind of see this, like, triangular look. And my issue with this is, well, there's a few things. One, the majority of the bag is actually this front pocket. This front pocket is massive. It's, it's hard to, it, to show how massive it is, but I, I mean, I can easily put my whole fist in there. Um, because it's just kind of going out. Now, there's a few reasons that's an issue. Um, one is because it's the it's kind of the hardest part to access. This little lip that comes over it makes it hard to get in. You pretty much have to push this lip in in order to reach inside. 
which is a shame because that means you can't really like store anything up here. It, it's almost as though it was designed more like some sort of like carpet bag or duffel where you're, it, it seems like it's almost meant to be opened from the top down rather than up, up here like this. Now it's got two, it's got two uh, dividing meshes in there. Can't really see them, but it's got two mesh dividers, which, you know, would be great, but it's really hard to like access them because again, there's so much space in this bag that if you're just using these dividers and like maybe some small thing in front of it, you're just wasting a ton of space. If you want to get the most out of this bag, or rather if you want to get the most storage space out of this bag, you would have to fill this area up. I really don't know why it's so big. It's, it's needlessly large on the outside. And this is the compartment that is advertised in their video as your phone pocket, which is very annoying to me because here's an old phone of mine. It's really not that big. Keep in mind, it is uh, a six and a quarter inches top to bottom, including the case. It's probably about the size of like a standard iPhone today. And you put it in there, fits, it's great. But now, you can't see this, but it's blocking the mesh pockets. If you have a phone in here, you're really not using the mesh dividers very well. Um, what I have found it very good for is putting like my wallet and my keys and especially my keys, like bulkier, larger objects inside of this. But it's really not good for like small objects at all. So I'm not sure why there is a divider in there. Talking about the main compartment now. I'm a little bit of trouble with those zippers. The main compartment would be great. It's got a little pen sleeve here, which is cool. It's got this key leash. I'm not sure why it has a key leash. It doesn't really make sense to me. In a bag this small, you do not need a key leash. Uh, I have no idea why they put it in. It just kind of gets in the way, uh, especially if you wanted to access it from the right. I'm the way I wear it, I access it from the, the left side here, but if you were accessing it from the right, then it's just something to kind of get in the way when you're trying to grab stuff. But it does have these two mesh dividers. Where my issues begin is the bag's too short. If I take my phone here, again, it's six and a quarter inches, set it in, it clears the top of the bag completely. This phone would need to be a good inch or so shorter in order to actually fit inside the bag. This is an issue because you want it to take up as little space as you can, which means you want it to be vertical. So if I had it in there vertically, if the bag was just like an inch taller, it would be great. Because it's not, I have to put it on its side where it is taking up the majority of the center of the bag. Now you might be like, Hey, that's not so bad. I mean, that's you can put stuff next to it or whatever. Well, that's where you're wrong because that is where the second major uh, issue with this comes in. And that is there is no depth whatsoever in this center pocket. The front pocket got all of the depth. There is none in the middle. If you put a phone on its side in here, you are not putting anything next to that phone. It is taken up. It's blocking this mesh pocket. You can put some, like, some flat things. If you have some, like, I don't know, a few business cards or, or something, like, really thin. I was keeping, like, a comb and some lock picks in there. There's no depth. Which is a real shame, because if there was just a little bit more depth, then you could, you could do a lot with this bag. For the third major issue, moving on to the straps. And it's not the straps themselves. The straps are great. Um, well, kind of. They don't have any padding or anything like that, so I was actually noticing as I wore it. Um, here, I'll put it on for a second. As I wear it, it tends to, like, kind of slide toward my neck. It just depends. It, I mean, it is a little uncomfortable as this brushes up on your neck, but that's not the main issue. The main issue are these strap keepers. Now, let me tell you, these are probably the worst strap keepers I've ever seen in my life. Not only are they clips, but they're not even fully attached clips. This little thing, this little tag here where, it, where it's folded over, this loop slides over an open clip. 
you can tell I'm kind of passionate about this because I, I really hate it. It's, it makes wearing this bag awful for me. These things suck. They will slide around almost 100% of the time. If I have this on my back and I slide it, slide it up to the front, I'm just using it normally, slide it back, it will be bunching up. It didn't actually do it right there, but it, it will bunch up like this. So it'll just get bunched up. And occasionally, I've only worn this for a few, maybe like six hours or so because of the lockdown. I haven't been out, out very often, but I've only gotten to wear this about, about six hours. And there have been like five times in that six hours across several days that the strap just completely comes off the clip. No idea what they were thinking with that. Nomadic, if you're listening, fix your strap keepers, come on. And as long as we're kind of like wearing it, uh, the other thing is it doesn't really sit great on the body. It, it's stiff and it's kind of stiff in like a bad way. Like as I wear it, it has a strong tendency. I kind of wear it, hopefully you can still hear me. <laughs> I kind of wear it up here. Uh, this is where it's most comfortable for me. And it just has this tendency as I walk to just kind of slowly slide down to the right of my body. And I say slowly, it's pretty fast. Um, it takes a few minutes, it really wants to be down at my side and it just doesn't conform. It's, it's pretty stiff. It has, doesn't really have much flex to it, uh, which could be a pro for you. But for me, it just, it just means that it doesn't want to be flush with my body. Another issue, these zippers, are loud. You might have noticed it during this video. I have no idea why they are so loud, but here, this is obviously exaggerated. Not much. If you were just walking qu quickly, it would sound like this. It's like they're echoing. And that, that, it sounds like that when the bag's full too. It's like whatever this material is, it amplifies the sound of the zippers. I thought the zippers would be great because they're kind of like this wire material with plastic heads, and it's like, oh, that probably won't make a whole lot of noise. They don't jangle, but they, it's like a thousand tiny drummers. So if you wanna be making a whole ton of noise, this'll do it. And then finally, my last issue with it, it's a really simple issue, and it doesn't really affect the bag, but it's just bright liner. It's gray on the inside. I don't really know why Bag makers don't all make their uh, the interior bright lined, and you know maybe you don't really need it in this particular bag because it is so shallow. Like you're not gonna lose anything in this, except for this front compartment. You'll lose stuff in here. It is dark. It is hard to see in here. It even has a little like sunshade blocking it off. So it would just be, yeah, it would be nice if it had some bright liner. Next, I'm gonna talk a little bit about what I would change on the bag, like improvements that I would make. And the first one is again, just the bright liners. It would be really easy to pop like a nomadic blue or something in here, just some sort of bright color, make it a little easier to see. I would also want to increase the size of this main compartment. Like I said before, about one inch higher, and I could fit this phone in here, no problem. And that would free up a lot of space. I'd also like to see some of the depth taken out of the front and put into the center. Just, just like that much depth, just a little bit so that I could, so that I could lay my phone side by side next to something else, like, like a pack of gum or something, you know, just to really help with the functionality of it. I'd probably remove the key leash. It's really just in the way. And then the front pocket, what I'd really like to see him do is Get rid of this like V shape that it's got going. Just kind of have a normal shape. Move the zipper further up so that it's easier to access and I don't have this lip to get through. And just make it shallower. If it was a little bit shallower, then you could still fit some, like a couple decently sized things in there. Maybe a wallet, keys, whatever. It doesn't need all of this space. It really could function and I think would function better if this pocket was smaller, thinner, and easier to access. And then let your main compartment do the organizing for you. You could maybe even put in a, a cu another couple 
mesh dividers or something in there to make up for the increased space. As for the strap keepers, just some elastic strap keepers I think would work better than this, honestly. Just, just get a piece of elastic, stretch it around it. They work fine. Countless bags use them. Are they the best strap keepers in the world? No, but there's also nothing wrong with them. They work fine. They should be cheaper than whatever they're doing here. And yeah, just elastic strap keepers. And then finally, this isn't really an issue with the bag, but I'd like to have easier access to that rear compartment. Maybe it would slightly reduce the like hidden pocket value, but I think it's more of an expandable pocket. At least to me, that's what it's for. And most slings you'll see will have a rear pocket. And I think that would really improve this bag. If you added, keep everything else, and just add a top access zipper right here so that you could access the expandable compartment without going through this double zipper sideways stuff, I think that would be really good. It would add some more organization, and then you would kind of have this situation where you can have just a little bit of like a small pocket on the back, or you could expand it, and then you would have a access to like a larger pocket, and you could access it from any, either the sides or the top or whatever's most convenient for you. That's just, that would be nice. Okay, so to rate this guy on design, I'd give it a five out of 10. It's a little underwhelming, really not that impressive design-wise. As I've gone over, there are a lot of flaws to this bag. It does not feel well thought out at all. It kind of feels like Nomadic just said, hey, we want to get a sling out, threw something together, didn't really test it or use it. I don't know what they were doing. For a bag that is marketed as one of the best designed bags on the market, or sling bags on the market, it feels like one of the worst designed sling bags on the market. It's really not well designed at all, I don't think. The expandability is really cool, but the rest of it, I was having a lot of issues with. For ease of use, I will similarly rate it five out of 10. A good bag should not get in your way. You should not notice it. This bag was getting in my way a lot. I had to do a lot of, a lot of creative bag loading. I had to try a whole bunch of different arrangements just to find something that worked for me. It definitely wasn't an easy experience. As far as build quality goes, I'd give it a seven out of 10. It's good. It's good build quality. Got the seatbelt straps, got this strong feeling, water resistant nylon that it's made of. It's good, it's fine. As for value, I'd give it a five, maybe a six. Let's call it five and a half. This thing comes in at $80 US. Honestly, for $80, I don't really think it's worth it. It's, it's okay. If you are into this kind of sling, if you think that you would really like this, if you really like a Nomadic and want to support them, it's worth $80, sure. But long term, I think I'd rather have something else for this price. I'd rather pay another 10 or 20 bucks and get something with more features, just something that doesn't get in your way as much. Overall, I'd give this a 5.5 out of 10. I think it is a little underwhelming. Now, I'm a big fan of Nomadic. I really am. And so for me to be honest with myself and just like accept that it's really not as good as I wanted it to be, I have to say it's it's just, it's it's okay. It's not even really that okay. I tried to like this a lot and I just didn't really like it that much. And part of that might be because of how I carry things. I carry a little more than the average person, probably. And if you are the kind of person who doesn't carry very much at all, if you just want to carry your phone and your wallet and like your keys and maybe like one or two other small things, this will be fine. It should be, it would actually be really good for you. But if you carry a little bit more like I do, or you might want to carry your sunglasses with you, you might want to carry, what do I carry? You want to carry some chapstick, earbuds, maybe some snacks. There's not a lot of real estate in this bag, and it will start filling up really quickly. And definitely not a water bottle. If you are looking for a sling that you can carry a water bottle in, and you're thinking about getting this one for that purpose, you could maybe fit a very small water bottle in it, but it would not be comfortable, 
and it doesn't work as well as you're thinking it would. Trust me, I've tried. Thank you guys for sticking around and checking out my review of the Nomadic 1 liter Navigator Sling. If you have it, leave something in the comments if there's anything you'd like to add. Thank you so much. Share your thoughts. And hopefully uh, this video was helpful. Bye now. <laughs>